Sure, it's cool owning a car from a brand that everyone knows, but have you ever tried owning a car from a brand that no one knows? Now is your chance. This is the GWM Aura, a super cool compact electric car from Chinese giant Great Wall Motors. It's coming to Australia very soon and it kind of looks to my mind a little bit like a Volkswagen Beetle, a little bit like a Mini Cooper and maybe some Fiat 500 and a bit of Porsche thrown in there for good measure. Overseas, this thing's called the Good Cat or the Funky Cat, but because Australia is boring, we just get to call it the Aura. So that feels like a little bit of a wasted opportunity, but otherwise it's a really exciting, somewhat what affordable electric car coming to Australia so let's check it out. Now we don't have the all important final pricing just yet but I'm pretty sure that will be confirmed by the time this video goes live so we'll flash it up on the screen for you but I can tell you there are going to be three variants available and they're likely to be priced from just under $50,000 drive away. After we filmed this video GWM confirmed the Aura would become the cheapest electric car in Australia but this will vary depending on where you live. Pricing kicks off from $44,490 drive away for the Aura standard range in the Northern Territory, but rises up to $47,891 drive away for the same car in Western Australia. Please note these drive away prices vary from state to state due to the different registration and stamp duty fees in each jurisdiction. The standard variant will have a 48 kilowatt hour battery and offer around 310 kilometers of range, while a larger 63 kilowatt hour battery will feature on the Aura Long Range and the Aura GT, offering up to 420 kilometers of range. This can only be charged at a peak charging rate of 80 kilowatts, which isn't a heap, but it should get your battery from 10 to 80% capacity in around 41 minutes. Size-wise, the GWM sits somewhere between a sort of Toyota Yaris and a Toyota Corolla with a very similar footprint to the Volkswagen Golf. So that should give you an idea of size, but obviously it kind of looks like nothing else there is on the roads at the moment, or maybe a mashup of everything there is on the roads. So to start, you've got this very mysterious logo, which will have people asking, what is he or she driving? And then you've got these kind of Beetle-esque uh, headlights here, which play a very cool animation when you unlock the car. I'll give you a demo now very nifty and then you've also got these kind of interesting lines on the bonnet as well that give it a bit of a sporty feel and if you move around to the back as well there's even more fun lighting to just make you stand out more from the crowd in case you weren't already <laughs> Now I've moved around to the back here and one of the coolest or most unusual things for me about this car is the location of the brake light. It's actually this long strip up here which is really interesting so kind of not where you'd expect it to be. On top of that when you unlock the car this does a cool little animation so I'll give you a demo now. How's that? And as well I've noticed down here there's remnants of its good cat past life and I do miss the good cat vibes. I think I might just keep calling it the good cat for good measure. Um, and back here you've got a 228 litre boot so that is not big I'll be honest with you but that's kind of what you'd expect looking at it from the outside right so you've probably got enough for a small supermarket shop. There is a charging cable in here and a really teeny amount of underfloor storage as well and of course those second row seats do fold down to boost that even further. So the retro styling on the exterior of the car is carried through really nicely into the interior. So I do feel like I'm in a car from maybe the 50s or 60s. Um, this bold turquoise color, can we call it turquoise? I don't know, you can let me know in the comments. Is paired nicely with this sort of paler cream leather as well. It's actually faux leather, these seats, but it feels pretty good and it's, it's fooling me. And then on this dash here, you've got a kind of suede finish as well. I don't particularly love the feel of it, but it looks good to the eye. So that's what's important. As well, you've got a fair amount of tech in here. So you've got your dual screen set up as well. This is a Thai spec car. So there's some instructions on here in Thai and I won't pretend that I can read Thai um, and put you through that. But you have got a wireless charger here. You've got a fair amount of storage for a compact car. So I've got some well-sized door bins down here, a couple of cup holders down here, more storage there, two USB ports, 12 volt outlet, and you've got some kind of interesting uh, switches here as well. They kind of feel like they're borrowed from a mini or something like that. So all in all, it's a pretty comfortable setup. And I've got to say, it feels pretty spacious for the fact that this is a small car. Adding to the open feel in this cabin is this great little sunroof here. So you can put it back, open it up really nicely. And I will say as well, it's really well tinted because there's a fair bit of glare today um, coming. We've got clouds in the sky, but it's still fairly bright and that's heavily tinted. I barely even noticed there was a sunroof when I first got in because it cuts out so much of that light. So 
well done to GWM for pulling that off and um, otherwise yeah it's a really nice spacious well appointed and quite unique cabin. Now I'm not as tall as some of my male colleagues but I am pretty tall for a girl or so I like to think. I'm about 178 centimeters. They've done a pretty good job of headroom in this car. There's some little kind of um, cut-ins here as well so dints in the roof that give you a bit of extra space and really maximize what's available and even then with the car in my regular driving position or even a little bit further back than I'd normally drive it I've got heaps of knee room, a fair amount of toe room as well and, and plenty of wiggle room so the floor is actually quite nice and flat as well. You don't have many kind of things impeding your foot room even if you are in the middle seat so that's handy the only thing I will say is no air vents back here so it is a small car you have to rely solely on the airflow from the front to get you through on hot summer days and then down here you've just got one USB port that you guys can all fight over in the back seat mat pockets on the backs of the seats small door bins and some sort of nice cushioned supportive seats with isofix points for child seats on both of the outboard seats here so it's pretty uh, accommodating for most people I think taller occupants might find their head is grazing the roof but they've done a good job of getting the most out of a compact footprint I got the chance to take a very brief five minute drive in the Aura for two laps of a close course and here are some of my early thoughts. For a more in-depth real world analysis of how it drives, stay tuned for our full review. So we're getting going in the GWM Aura which is their electric compact car. It's very exciting. I've been looking forward to driving this one for quite some time. So this has single pedal mode which we've switched on through the menu here and if I just ease off the accelerator a little bit here. Ooh, it's quite a subtle slowdown. It's not as dramatic as you would get in other electric cars. So this car, it feels really light and nimble because it is, of course, a small car, which is exciting. There are not many small electric cars available at the moment. It's mainly just the Nissan Leaf. So it's kind of very quick off the mark as you would expect from an electric car, but it also feels quite light going around corners. And I've actually got really great all round visibility. So I've got a few headrests in my line of vision out the back, but the rear windshield is quite wide and nicely sized. I've got really nice big side mirrors as well and it's kind of just easy to get a good view of the road and everything that's around you as well. Steering feel is quite light, which is what you want I think for a compact car that's mainly focused around city driving, but you know it's nice and quick. It's got a fair amount of guts. It certainly never feels underpowered. I'm going pretty fast around some hills and bends and that kind of thing and it feels really nicely powered for tackling that. It's also riding pretty well so it's a little bit bumpy. You can feel the bumps in the cabin but any of that harder edge is taken out. We're about to head onto some gravel roads shortly so I'll see how it handles those but for the most part it's a very comfortable car and also these seats are really comfortable. They're really squishy and, and quite supportive. There's not a heap of lumbar support but they're uh, yeah really nicely uh, positioned as well so I feel quite upright which suits the vibe of the car I think. So something I really love about this car is that when you slow down and you're indicating, it actually pops up a curb view camera automatically. So it does show you if you're parking, maneuvering in sort of narrow side streets, whether you're likely to curb the wheels, which I think is something a lot of us could use on a daily basis. Um, certainly I can, I'm not too proud to admit it. So that's a really handy feature as well. Um, the indicator is kind of that soft touch, um, soft touch feel as well. So um, you kind of can't feel that tactile click over, which I know some people people really like but you do get that nice satisfying clip clop clip clop noise which I think everyone appreciates I'll do it quickly for you now there we go <laughs> bit old school and this does feel a little bit like you're in a kind of retro car like a Volkswagen Beetle or even a Mini Cooper or something like that it's lots of fun and with that in mind you know the handling because it is a smaller footprint it does feel quite agile going around the corners. It's probably not at the same go-kart level as a Mini, but it's pretty fun actually to drive. We're heading onto gravel roads in a minute, so we'll see how it goes with that. It's probably not its natural habitat, but it might surprise me. <laughs> So the gear shifter in this car is actually a dial down here, so it's pretty hard to miss that one. And then you've got to manage your steering wheel, uh, your cruise control via a stalk on the steering wheel, which is actually a little bit hard to see behind the steering wheel itself. So I'm not gonna use it at the moment, but I can imagine it's a little bit fiddly, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be uh, good to go. So, um, and as I said before, it's nice and handy to have a good digital speedo. There's no head up display in this car, and this is the, spec that we'll be getting in Australia. It's also the spec they got in uh, the United Kingdom as well. So um, this is pretty much ready to sell. 
So I just got a notification saying the emergency steering has been activated and we think that's possibly because it picked up a guardrail on the side of the road here. So we're doing some fairly winding roads with a few obstacles either side and it's probably thought that I was uh, ready to drive it off a cliff, which I'm definitely not. And it's um, going to intervene, which is always good to test that kind of thing out. Not actually, not following through, but it's good to know that it's there if you ever need it. Um, I still don't know what smart dodge mode is. Hasn't really done anything possibly dodge them car mode that would be fun but um maybe it dodges something for you if it, something runs out into the road like a kangaroo which is highly likely given where we are at the moment so we'll have to see if that kicks in at any point but it's got a fairly uh, comprehensive list of safety equipment and technology so um obviously yet to be rated by ANCAP because it's very new but it's got a nice long list of active safety features it just told me again that the emergency steering has been activated so clearly it doesn't trust my driving <laughs> all right we're heading onto the gravel road now very exciting i really like the one pedal um function in this car actually single pedal drive because it isn't too dramatic in decelerating and it doesn't make me feel like i have whiplash a whiplash i feel like i'd be very um, open to using this on a regular basis in some electric cars I've driven it's too nausea inducing to use the one pedal drive mode and so you end up just switching it off but this is a really even handover um, between braking and accelerating which is nice Go. And it rode quite well on that gravel road I've got to say so um, it's certainly not your full-blown SUV you can still get a sense of the terrain beneath the car but that's probably a good thing you want to know what you're driving on and it's really comfortable so as I said before you kind of feel the bumps but you don't have any of the edge it cuts that out really nicely something I love in this car is nice tactile switches for your climate control I always miss that in electric cars that go a little bit too screen heavy and this actually feels like it's borrowing some of its switch gear from the mini models so um, it's got those kind of retro almost fighter pilot <laughs> tabs down here I'll give you a closer look when we're stopped but that's really great because when you're on the go that is exactly what you want you want something that's tactile and easy to use without having to take your eyes off the road I also love the positioning of the air vent. So you've got one that's sort of slightly higher on the right here and it's hitting me right just where my arm is on the steering wheel. And then you've got one that's a little bit lower so it's not blowing air into my face, but it's cooling me down very effectively. I've driven a few cars recently that have very bizarre placement of air vents. So I'm really appreciating the very practical placement of the air vents in this car. One last thing to add in this car is I'm really noticing some wind noise around the mirror. So I actually thought it was the fan for the climate control, but having turned the climate control off, you do get a fair bit of wind noise, especially in this area next to the drivers. So that's something to note. And it's obviously exacerbated by the lack of engine noise too. So possibly you wouldn't notice it as much in a car with engine noise, but unfortunately this car is very silent. So you really notice every little sound. Australian orders for the GWM Aura open on the 9th of February 2023 and GWM expects first deliveries to commence in April. The GWM Aura is backed by a 7 year unlimited kilometre warranty while the battery receives coverage for 8 years. Thanks for watching. If you want more information about this nifty little city car with electric power coming soon to a road near you, then obviously head to drive.com.au. Like this video and subscribe to our channel or else. See what I did there?